Hey, Brandon here. Welcome back to another episode of the 2023 NFL Rookie Report. I'm here with my good friend, Jason DiRienzo. He is a recent graduate of the Scouting Academy and co-founder of the Devi Watch. Jason, are you ready to talk some Zay Flowers? Oh, let's talk some Zay Flowers, Brandon. Yeah, yeah you're ready. All right, so we are going to talk about Zay Flowers. We've watched his 2022 film. I've cut up probably four or five films on him that are on this YouTube channel, mm -hmm. so I'm going to put two of those at the end of this show. We're going to talk about his expected draft capital, where we think the NFL draft at this moment. It's the middle of December. We're putting this film out. And we're going to talk about his future dynasty value and where we see some potential landing spots, give you a player comp. So thanks for tuning in. We've done a ton of these shows on this channel. Um, so please check them out and, um, you know, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about Zay Flowers. I have a feeling Jason and I are going to be on the same page. We've had previous discussions on Zay Flowers, so I'm excited to get right into it. All right. So. Zay Flowers. What do we see in Zay Flowers? All right. So Zay Flowers is five foot ten, 172 pounds. Now he's going to be mixed in in the NFL draft with a lot of other wide receivers, very similar in size. So this is a very kind of smaller class as we head into the draft. On the season, college football is over. He had 78 receptions for 1,077 yards and 12 TDs. He has been a productive, I believe he is a senior. Um, so we've got some uh, PFF stats here that we're going to go through. Uh, these are season-ending stats. Snap location, something I think is, is of interest, especially with a player of this um, you know, size, I was very surprised here, Jason. 66% he played outside, 33% in the slot. I thought was really interesting in yeah. watching his films. I mean, yeah, guy's got some wheels. We're going to talk about that here shortly, but he's got some vertical ability, and we're going to you know, you know, know, talk about that when we get to a scouting report. His catch percentage, 63%. Mm, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, I think drops are something he has had an issue with his entire career. Yards per reception, 13.8 kind of tells you that he's a, you know, an explosive receiver um, and his average depth of target is 10.4. That's also showing you that he's a, a vertical play, has the ability to uh, win a little vertical. Uh, his yak per reception was 6.4, which I was really surprised when I kind of, you know, did the research. Again, these are off, off PFF, these stats. I thought it was going to be a little bit more because he did get loose quite a bit in college this year yeah. as far as, you know, making some explosive plays down the field and stuff. So I thought his yak was going to be a little bit more than that, but got to trust what we see on the, on the screen so that is what it is so anything about those numbers you want to make a comment about about flowers no those those numbers basically tell the story of flowers him playing on the inside meaning near the outside and those deep shots at the 13 yards per reception i could see that all right so let's get into his rookie scouting report all right this is uh you know we're going to go through five traits here uh, these are on my Debbie dashboard, which is a product that, you know, you can join. I have a featured video on this YouTube channel. Go check that out and kind of tells you all about that, what I've got going. So his release and route running. I'm going to read you my scouting report, Jason. I'd love to hear your comments. All right. I said okay. here he has a first quick step with shifty feet, shows a lot of variation at the release with the ability to plant and reroute. I think he does a good job manipulating defensive backs with head movements and head fakes. Um, uh, he has outside inside versatility, which I think is nice. We just kind of mentioned, you know, where he played out wide and in the slot, um, doesn't face a lot of high, you know, a lot of press coverage. And we, we face that when we talk a lot about wide receivers in college, um, you know, they just a lot of, uh, formations where they're getting out loose and they're not, you know, they don't have a DB right in their face, but I thought his explosiveness off the line was good. And I think he's got the ability to, to be very shifty at the end of his stems. And so from a release and route running, um, although we don't see someone right on his hip, um, I feel as though he is is pretty decent in that category. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. He's a twitchy athlete. Um, you know, he's very sudden at the line of scrimmage, does a good good job using stemming in order to manipulate to change the direction. But uh, yeah, I think you nailed a lot of the great points with his, uh, with his athleticism there. Okay. So his ball skills and hands. All right. Um, I don't think he's obviously not a physically imposing player you know, but I mean, I'll tell you what, the dude made some really good catches down the field. Yeah. I mean, he made some really good, which tells me he's got good concentration. He's got good hands. Ball skills and hands is uh, is the trait that we're talking about right now. He's not going to excel in 50-50 balls due to his size, but I thought he displayed good ball tracking. He made some really great body control adjustments going up and getting the ball. I got to give the kid props for his size. I mean, he's, he mm -hmm. plays tough. Um, you know, he's just physically going to be challenged at the NFL level, but I felt as though in college, I mean, he really went up and and made some 
um, some good plays. But, you know, he had nine drops this year. And I went back and looked at his history of drops, and it's pretty consistent between 9 and 11 percent, you know, drop rate. So this is an issue that's plagued him in his career. You know, I know you would go into the scouting academy. I'm interested. What, what do you? What is your? What is your your take on that? When somebody shows, you know, they just concentration. I mean, he's made some jaw dropping catches and you know sideline grabs, and then yet sometimes they just clank off his hands. Yeah, hands are one thing that you really have to look at the context of why these drops are happening, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, is he is it shadow to light? Is he coming from the sun into a shadow? I mean, is it defenders getting in his way, or is he literally just not having you know concentration drops? Like, is it on him? But with the amount of targets and receptions that he's been getting every single year, nine isn't that that bad. I mean, Rasheed Rice, okay. I think, has nine, and we just. He just makes outstanding catches. So it might be inconsistent and frustrating, but it doesn't really limit what he can do on the field. We know he has the ball skills. He's he's a contortionist adjusting to the ball and making spectacular catches. Yeah, he does. He's he's definitely got that flexibility going for him. His yeah. acceleration and speed, uh, again, here in my notes, is he has ex excellent acceleration and play speed. I mean, I think he's a three-level threat in the NFL because that's what he did in college. Um, he can take the top off a of defense and creates easy separation. And I have a, you know, I did some research on his, on his 40 time and it looks like he's about a four, three or a little more than that. Um, I, that's where I, I think everyone's expecting him to come in. So, you know, he's got good acceleration. He's got good speed. We've got the ball in his hands. I, I think, you know, there, that's probably one of his, his calling cards and what NFL teams are going to like about him. Um, yeah, I, I think you need a lot of good points there too. I just, the, the speed is going to be his calling card. I mean, that's probably what's going to get him drafted sure. a little bit higher in the twitchiness of being an athlete who's right. versatile playing inside outside. But at the same time, he's very limited due to what we're about to talk about the play strength, but the speed, the athleticism is definitely going to help him out. Yeah. So yards after the catch again, I mentioned it's 6.4 in 2022 showed, uh, what, what Jason had said, he's a contortionist, you know, good body control. I really liked his vision in the second level. I thought he yeah. said, I thought he set up defenders. He just didn't run to open space. He was trying to manipulate the defenders to get, you know, you know, better angles and pursuit angles from the defenders. So I really liked what I saw in that. So I think he's, I think that's going to be, you know, where he wins in the NFL. I think space is going to have to be manufactured for him. He's going to be like a, uh, you know, a slant guy, get a guy, you know, get him the ball within 10, 15 yards, a quick, you know, out route or whatever, trying to get him in space to, you know, do damage in the second level. Yeah, I liken him to what I would have seen from like an Elijah Moore, Ron, Rondale Moore, that, that mm -hmm. type of twitchy athlete that just get him in space and allow him to create. And I think that's going to work. That, that's where he's going to make his money. Yeah, exactly. So again, physicality and athleticism. He's got the athleticism. I don't think there's much to talk about that. I think we've already mentioned that, that that's what, mm -hmm. you know, he's got physicality is going to be, I think the issue for him, you know, um, you know, he's like I said, he, he's not going to win imposing, you know, I think DBs in his face and hand fighting and doing that. He's going to just have to, to, to work and find space out there. So I think that's going to be a concern. Yeah, it is going to be a concern. I don't, uh, he's going to be able to get knocked off his route pretty easily, and he needs to be on time at the catch point. So until I see him get a little bit stronger, fight through contact, use a little bit of swim and rip or whatever he needs to do in order to create space and be physical, I want to see that happen because him being on time within his route, within his route breaks, without being you know bullied around is going to be key for him considering he has dropped the ball quite a bit too. Yeah, so... All right, so that's his scouting report, guys. And I was doing some research. I, I'm a little disappointed. He's going to the Shrine Bowl and not the Senior Bowl. What, what, do, what do you what do you make about that? That that tells me. I mean, I, the Nagy guy who runs that Senior Bowl did did he just not want him there? Is that is that how that works? I'm not sure how they get picked on Senior Bowl Shrine Bowl, but I know Shrine Bowl um, isn't good. And my guy Kyle Phillips last year was a Shrine Bowl guy who seemed to make some buzz before he hurt his shoulder and went on IR this year for the tech for the uh, for the Titans. But yeah, I don't know. I was a little disappointed that he didn't get a Senior Bowl invite. Usually that, I mean, this this can be overcome, but usually that puts them anywhere between the fourth and the fifth as a default 
within mm-hmm. draft capital range. Okay. But they can also be called up to the Senior Bowl, I believe, if they perform highly at the Shrine Bowl, if I remember correctly. So it's still a possibility how this all works out. Okay. So let's talk about his draft capital, all right? So I did a little research for the show, all right? Right now on two different um, NFL mock draft database, I, I'm always tongue-twisted with that damn website for some reason. He's ranked, <laughs> though, he's ranked on the ninth receiver getting day two draft capital right now. And on Tankathon, wow. it's kind of around the same thing. So I personally don't see him a day two guy. I, I think he's either. I think he's a day three guy and it's early. I mean, there's a lot of these other receivers may emerge and, and stuff. But yeah, I, I I think he's a day three guy. I don't think there's any way he gets unless someone just unless he goes to the combine and just blows the doors off the, the three cone and yeah. it gets a four three forty and it just really looks explosive. Um I don't I don't see anything before um a day three draft capital. Yeah, I got I got round five, six right now. But the, the thing with him, he's been vastly productive. Yeah, fairly consistent. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's a big playmaker. So it does just take one team to fall in love and need a guy like that on their team for him to go higher. But yeah, that Shrine Bowl really threw me off a little bit. I I think fifth, sixth is probably more of a range at this point. Okay. Um, Rookie draft selection. All right. So we did our two round mock. He wasn't drafted. Um, And I think we had mentioned on that show too. So we, so Jason and I did a two round rookie mock a few weeks ago. So go to the channel and check that out. It's on this, uh, on this channel. And we had some fun with that. Um, Yeah. I think he's a a round three rookie pick. I mean, unless I don't even think if he gets a great landing spot, I'm going to be reaching for Zay flowers. No, I'm, I'm with you, man. I think three somewhere in there uh even landing spot even with opportunity it's just he's he's that type of player where you gotta be very careful Mm -hmm. you know with his size and everything fantasy wise let's say fantasy wise exactly so i mean i think he's a wide receiver four probably um Mm -hmm. from a projected fantasy value uh do you see him i don't ever see him being. i got four with three upside yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. So landing spot, we'd like to, you know, put the uh, crystal balls on here and, and talk about landing spot. I put my Eagles down because I need a slot receiver. And then I'm thinking, you know, I put that on the show sheet and I'm thinking, you know, Quez Watkins right now is our third I like guy. Quez Watkins. I like and, him, man. And I'll tell you what, the, the guy just drips with physicality for his yeah. size. I mean, he's got the speed. And then I'm like, you know what? I think it's really going to be really hard for Zay Flowers to really make an impact on a team on a regular basis on our fantasy rosters. I mean, because I look at Quez Watkins and I just see a guy with the same amount of speed and twitchiness, but the physicality you can just see is is different. Yeah, yeah, I can I can see that. Uh, the Eagles, I mean, it would be fun. Just the offense. It's a very explosive offense right now. Um, I, I don't really have an ideal landing spot for him because like I said, even if there is immediate opportunity, I'm still not that thrilled with what he could deliver, you know, Mm -hmm. at his size and, you know, just the development I think he needs. So I think any team, um, but one without a lot of receiver help would probably be best at this point. Yeah, see, I think a a team that has two really good receivers is the best spot for him because they'll take coverage off him and he won't be Well, he's going to be a slot, so I'm not sure how much... You know what I mean? I I don't think even though we played outside in college, I don't think you trust him on the outside. So, uh, so a player comp. All right. I'm going to your, your beloved Chicago bears over here, buddy. All right. So Darnell Mooney, is that a good or a shitty comp? Is that because that Darnell Mooney is kind of the same size and I see the, the elite quickness. I haven't watched a ton of Mooney and a ton of Chicago bears, you know, not my favorite team to watch, you know, um, although, <laughs> although fields is getting a little better. You know, so it's been fun lately. Thank yeah, God. I'm sure it has for at least yeah. for the last few weeks. Right. Right. Uh, is Darnell Mooney a good comp or a bad comp? I mean, what do what you, uh, you know what? I, I can kind of see that, but I think Darnell Mooney is such a nuanced route runner. Just understands, mm-hmm. you know, just the timing and the tempo within his routes. And he's got such an extended route tree at this point. Um, I think he's a little more advanced, but if you're talking to me about the athleticism and the skill set and everything that kind of he embodies, Zay Flower does, I can see that. Yeah, I don't yeah, think that's either. a bad comp at all. I I I have a I see KJ Hamler maybe I'm not sure about the size, but I see the I same like type word. of twitchy athlete that I saw at Penn State, and yeah. it could be a problem like we've seen with Hamler, where he just and once he gets hurt, he can't stay healthy because he just doesn't have the size, you know, and the physicality to kind of overcome the NFL competition he's facing. 
I like that. I, I think that's a great comp. I'm going to steal that one from you on other <laughs> okay. shows and stuff, you know, because I, I think, you know, it's just funny because I was updating my dynasty ranks on the dashboard and and he's like, just KJ Hamler's just buried down there. I mean, yeah. he just can't stay healthy. And I know he had the ACL and, and, and all of that. So, all right, well, there you guys got it. There is, you know, if you're a, 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 a flowers believer, um, you're probably not happy with Jason and I right now. But <laughs> we didn't really uh, help any at all. Yeah, we didn't help. But but listen, we're here to give you our honest opinion. Right. There's a lot of people out there that just pump every one of these rookies up and they all tell you how great they're going to be. So we're trying to give you an honest thing. And we watch the film probably more than most guys. So we really watch the majority of his game. So like I said at the beginning of the show, I'm going to leave you two uh, scouting films right now on Zay Flowers. So you can take a look. And I have probably four or five on this channel. So if you like the show, you know, please hit that subscribe button. Stick around. We got a lot of great content heading into the rookie draft. So again, guys, thank you for watching. Jason, as always, always having a pleasure being you on here, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. All right see you guys later.